Good morning. Good morning. Para hindi pa kayo na. Good morning. We're continuing our series po. Uh, part 3 na po tayo ng ating series entitled, Hello, <laughs> Hearing the Voice of God. And I pray na we're learning about how to really discern yung voice niya sa pang-araw-araw natin buhay. So far, we've talked about, you know, hearing uh, God through His uh, uh, Word, di ba? And uh, gusto ko na patuloy natin i-open ang sarili natin sa mga i-reveal ni Lord sa, sa atin, you know, in our daily walk. So, before I go into uh, our topic today, gusto ko lang sana nga uh, uh, yayain kayo to pray with me kasi alam naman ninyo na nagkaroon ng matinding earthquake sa Bohol and Cebu and a lot of people have died. And even now, uh, kaya try pa rin nila ma-recover some of the bodies na... Uh, Unfortunately, medyo na tabu na ng mga, mga lupa and buildings and so forth. So join with me as we pray, no? Na God will just uh, help uh, lalo mga families na nawalan ng mga mahal sa buhay. So let's just bow our heads right now and pray for these people. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, Panginoon, in behalf dun sa mga kababayan namin in Bohol and Cebu. We have suffered a lot, Lord. Uh, because of the earthquake. We ask you, Father, that uh, by your grace and mercy, uh, first of all, that you would uh, just uh, send encouragements to them in some way, Lord, either through people who would uh, just go out there and reach out to them and comfort them, or maybe through uh, relief goods na mari makarating na sa kanila, Panginoon, as soon as possible. We realize, Father, na misa mayroong mga blockage, may mga bureaucracy. So we ask you, Lord, na in your mercy, Father, we pray na you would remove whatever hindrance there might be uh, para makarating na yung mga tulong na uh, ipinapadala sa kanila. We pray na you would not allow people who would like to take advantage of the situation by uh, getting those uh, relief goods or, or money that is allotted for repairs and so forth, Panginoon, yung mga donations coming from Korea and other places, oh God. We ask you, Father, na huwag mong payagan na yung mga masasamang tao to uh, take advantage of this or to steal itong mga relief goods na to or itong pera na to. May these things reach the people na kailangan matulungan, Panginoon, as soon as possible. We're praying for wisdom, Lord God, sa mga naguhukay that they may uh, somehow be able to to do this as soon as possible, as fast as possible, Lord. Makami must save pa sila. We are asking you, Father, uh, to keep alive all those who may still be under some rubble or whatever, Lord God, na, to just uh, help the rescue people to find those people as soon as possible, Panginoon. And we are praying for our nation, Lord. Nakatapos na ng bagyo and now earthquake, Lord God. We are praying, Father, for your mercy. Uh, and we just ask you, Lord, na sana ma-realize namin lahat in this country, Panginoon, that truly, Lord, uh, uh, ang tanging kailangan namin is you and you alone, Panginoon. Uh, lahat ng progress or e economic development, Panginoon, would not be enough. Ultimately, it is you alone that we need. So we pray, Father, that there might be a way na sa gitna ng mga trahedya nito that the gospel would somehow penetrate the hearts of those who are looking for hope and for answers, Father. So we thank you so much, Panginoon. May we continue to just pray uh, for these people, Lord God. And salamat, Lord, na we can do this right now as a church. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, thankfully, hindi, pa, hindi palagi yung earthquake, you know. But uh, kung pwede nga lang, once is enough. Uh, pag nangyari yung earthquake, uh, I do pray na sana matuto yung mga tao. Like, for example, I mean, mas madalas yung bagyo, right? Mas madalas yung bagyo. And uh, sa, kahit paano, dahil sa sobrang dami ng anong bagyo, medyo natututo na yung ating government and, you know, on the national level as well as on the local level. Medyo nagiging ano na, medyo mas ready na ng konti ngayon. Mas, mas ano na, prepared na ika nga to, uh, to deal with such calamities. Unfortunately, with this earthquake, hindi pa tayo ganun ka, you know, uh, ka-equipped. We have yet to learn our lessons, ikang uh, Until now, medyo mabagal pa rin tayo when it comes to rescue. And 
Uh, I'm not praying na magkaroon tayo palagi ng earthquake, but you know, I'm thinking, sana naman pagkaroon ng isa, dalawang earthquake, uh, dahil hindi lang naman minsan nagkaroon earthquake sa bansa natin, there have been earthquakes before, di ba? And sana we learn our lessons, di ba? Uh, unfortunately, it's just minsan parang it's so hard for people to learn from their experiences. And uh, today, I want to talk about this kasi this is also our problem as as far as being followers of Jesus. Minsan, you know, we cannot, uh, what do you call this, parang learn from experiences. And uh, last week, we, we talked about yung exposures natin to the Word of God, di ba? And, and it's so important for us na makinig sa salita ng Diyos. But in reality, uh, sometimes we fail to do that. Just like siguro when you were growing up, ilan sa inyo, an experience nyo when you were growing up, you know, na mayroon mga sinasabi sa yung mga magulang mo and basically hindi mo masyadong pinapakinggan. Right, just be honest, right? Okay. And then, later on, pag may na-experience ka, how I many of you could say na this is true? Later on, pag may na-experience ka, bigla sasabihin mo, Sinabi na to ng nanay ko eh, no? O sinabi na to ng tatay ko eh, no? Now, now, I, now I remember or now I understand what niya sinabi yun. You, you follow me? Di ba? Like for example, ako, when, when I was young, my mom would always tell me things, okay, sabi niya sa akin, ganito dapat, ganyan dapat. And alam mo naman, di ba, pag medyo kabataan ka, pasok dito, labas doon, you're not really listening, no? Uh, and then, ganyan, tatay na ako and magulang na ako and, and all of that. Uh, I, I realized a lot of things that Sina Sabi just said when I was young really made a lot of sense. But only now, after my experiences. So, madaling salita ganun din tayo when it comes to our walk with the Lord. Um, in a given year, in a given year, kung kayo ay faithful sa Panginoon, uh, you would be listening to about 52 sermons. Okay? 52 messages from God's Word. 52. That's a lot. Okay? If you think about it. 52 lessons are supposedly dapat maging life-changing for you. And kung talagang yung 52 lessons na yun, tumago sa yung puso at talagang nagkaroon ng ugat and if it just, you know, transform your thinking and dapat ang resulta niya would be a life that is really transforming, that is really changing. But there are many believers na kahit na expose mo na expose the Word of God, you know, there are some na hindi lang naman sila Sunday umaaten. For example, in our church, may pa tayong upbeat. So, kung nag upbeat ka every week, that means you have 104 lessons a year. Check that out. 104 messages from God's Word na bumapasok supposedly sa tenga mo. Ang tanong ko, does it, you know, buma, tumatama ba yan dito sa, you know, dyan, and then dumidiretso ba yan sa puso mo o dumidiretso lang yan sa kabilang tenga? Because there are still a lot of believers na kahit na nakikinig sila ng Word of God, it seems like hindi pa rin nila mag what God is trying to teach them. So it would take experiences pa. Just for people to realize, whoa, now I understand what God is saying to me. But supposedly hindi naman dapat ganun, but it just works out that way, di ba? Kung totoo si pag sinabi ni Lord sa iyo isang bagay, you should respond by saying, well, amen and amen. Lord, thank you for this revelation. Salamat, Lord. You don't need to, to you know, to bring me to any kind of experience. Natuto na ako agad. I know, dapat ganito, prioritize ka, hindi, you know, the anything else. Seek first the kingdom of God. I know, I understand. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And then your life is changed. That would be wonderful, di ba? But what usually happens is that you hear the word, like for example, right now I'm preaching, you're looking at me, some of you that are really paying attention, and you're saying to yourself, I need this, kailangan ko to, I need to pay attention. Okay? But others are looking at me with blank faces, about, they're not really listening, or kaya they're, they're, you know, you're not even listening, maybe what I'm talking, or maybe a few minutes from now, nagtuturo ako, some of you will go like this, parang, depending on the kayo kagabi, you know? Or maybe you're, you're seated with somebody na, di ba, crush mo, or crush kanya, or crush yung isa't isa, and, you know, and so while I'm speaking, parang, kunyari nakikinig ka sa akin, pero, you're just staring at the person beside you. You're not even paying attention to God's word. That's why, a lot of times, for many of us, God has to use experiences just to get through to us. Okay? That's how we are. Okay? Kasi, ano tayo eh, we're weak in our flesh. So God has to use different kinds of media to get through us. 
Diba? Kung, kung totoo siya, sapat na sana, when you open your Bibles, you just say, well, Amen, Lord, thank you for this word. I'm going to live like this. Pero in reality, it doesn't work out like that. In reality, misa may maririnig kang sermon, it would take several experiences before you would say, Aha! Now I understand. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't even work out like that. Sometimes, misa ang tagal-tagal na. Sometimes it's even a year or so. And then, saka mo palang magtatagpi-tagpi, maduduktong-duktong yung mga bagay-bagay, and you say, Wow! Ngayon ko lang nag-gets yun. Narinig ko na yun dati kay Pastor Bong, but I never really listened. And you know why? And this may come as a surprise for you, but for others, maybe not. Pero the truth is, every time na makikinig ka ng sermon, God is so interested in getting the word into your heart, na pagkatapos, pagkatapos sa linggo, immediately after Sunday, hindi sa Sunday pala ng hapon o gabi, Monday, there will be some experience in your life, and God is do, allowing that to happen because He wants you not to disregard His word, but to really let His word sink deep into your heart. Okay? So, I mean, nag- nagkakaroon ng pagsubok, nagkakaroon ng test. Just a few days after the Sunday service, but, you know, like for example, if I'm teaching about anger, if I'm teaching you about being patient, and you're listening there, you say, Amen! Preach it, Pastor! Amen! But you don't really understand it. So, after, the thing on Wednesday, Thursday, you get into a conflict, and you blow up, and you say, ah! You know, and you try to kill the other person. And just before you, you know, stop the person, you know, you remember, don't be angry. <laughs> Be patient. And then you stop, you say, wow, hindi ko na-realize na angry person pala ako. Hindi ko na-realize na angry birds pala ako, you know? I didn't realize that I have that problem. In fact, a lot of us dito don't even realize how much problems we have deep inside. See, God knows us so fully that if He's going to tell us everything that that's wrong about us, baka mahimatay tayo, or madiscourage tayo, mag-give up na tayo for, you know, mag- Patiwakal na lang tayo because there, there's so much there sa ating pagkatao that needs changing. And God knows that. And God loves us. Amen? Isn't that a wonderful thing? Di ba? Lagi natin sinasabi, God loves me kahit, kahit nagkakamali ako, nagkakasala ako. Would you say amen to that? That's true, di ba? But God loves me. Well, we stop there. We say, oh, God loves me, God loves me. And, you know, sweet naman, nabibless ako, puso ko para sa sabog na God loves me. Don't stop there. God loves you. That's why He's going to tell you things about you that you don't know yet. And sometimes, it's not enough na gamitin lang niya yung kanyang word. Sometimes, He would allow us to hear His word, but He knows us better. He knows na minsan, He's talking to you, pero yun sa iniisip mo yung katabi mong kinakausap ni Lord, di ba? I, I see this a lot of times, lalo pag mag-asawa, di ba? Pag may pinipreach ako, sasabihin ng babae, para sisikuhin niya yung lalaki, para <clears throat> kinig ka dyan, mm, you know? Because she's thinking, you're the problem, I don't have that problem. But let me tell you what, it's tayo lahat yun eh. Every time there's a preaching of God's word, we should be listening, listening carefully. Kasi it's all of us. Amen? Pag nag-aaral na ako ng Word of God, I, I don't just say na parang, Lord, sige nga, turo mo sa akin, para may turo ko sa kanila. Because the truth is, when I'm studying God's Word, I always ask the Lord, Lord, is this for me first? Because it is. Amen? So, katulad nyo rin ako, nakakalimutan ko rin ng mga bagay-bagay. Sometimes, I would hear God's Word or read God's Word. And sometimes, parang alam pa, nagka-quiet time ka, di ba? You read a verse, di ba? Parang, okay, para kanino kaya ito? Siguro para kay Paul to, you know? And I, I, I don't pay attention to it. And then later on, I would experience something and then I would realize, I would connect the two and I would say, Wow, Lord, sinabi mo sa akin kaninang maga yun, or sinabi mo sa akin a few days ago. <laughs> but now I realize it's really about me that you're talking to. No? So I hope that you and I, matuto tayo dito because God loves us very much. Yes. Amen? And because He knows our weaknesses, oftentimes He would use experiences para makausap tayo ng maigi. Amen? So, what I'm going to do today is look at a particular story in the Bible. And it's very encouraging to know, very encouraging to know, na hindi lang tayo may problema na ganito. Say amen. <laughs> it goes as far back as, as, as you know, as the, as the first creation of man, okay? But we're going to look at a, a story uh, concerning a, uh, an apostle. And his name is Peter. And he had this problem as well. Siya yung tipong tao na he spent three years with the master teacher. Can you imagine this? Just visualize. Si Peter spent three years with Jesus Christ. And then, pagkatapos na ipako si Jesus and he died and he rose again and he went to heaven, okay? 
Marami pa rin si Peter na hindi naiintindihan. Just like us. Amen. <laughs> now, of course, tayo, we did not spend three years with Jesus. So, para may excuse tayo ng konti. <laughs> diba? Pero si Peter went through the same kind of parang uh, experience of trying to understand what God is saying. And di lang si Peter, even the early church as a whole, were going through that kind of ikanga processing. Kaya mga kapatid, let me tell you something. When you listen to a sermon like this, okay, when you read a book, or you attend a seminar, ganyan, ganyan, don't think that natapos na doon. Don't ever think that tapos na lahat. When you attend a seminar, when you listen to some kind of teaching, God is simply preparing you for some experiences. Amen? Because He knows na most of the time, most of us dito will not learn hanggang di tayo nakaka-experience ng isang bagay. Amen? So we're going to look at this story. It's found in Acts. We'll start with Acts 15. And then, to para maintindihan natin what happened to Acts 15, we're going to go back to Acts 10 and 11. Now, it's, a, it's a two chapters, medyo mahaba. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, just get excerpts, okay? Kasi pag binasa ko o pag pinag natin yung chapter 10 and 11, baka, you know, lunis na, nandito pa tayo. Alright? So, amen? You don't want to stay here until Monday, no? Di ba? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get portions of it while I'm telling the story. And then we're going to identify five important parameters or guidelines patungkol sa how we can hear God through experiences. Okay? Amen ba? So we're going to look at five principles, parang ito yung parameters natin o guidelines natin, para when you're going through some kind of experience, you would know na maybe, just maybe, God is speaking to you and so you should pay attention. Alright? And then we will end up with a principle, you know, na I hope na you would always remember. Okay, para pa minig tanong siya. Ano tuturan mo? Ano tuturan mo si Sermon? Ah, uh, tukol kay Jesus. And I hope na you will go beyond that and say na meron ako na tuturan ng prinsipyo. Okay, and you can share this with others. Amen. So let's pray. Let's just ask the Lord. Lord, uh, please forgive us. Alam ko many times you're speaking to us through your word directly, clearly. Pero sometimes panginoon yung isip namin lumilipat. Sometimes we're not paying attention. Sometimes talaga, for some reason, physically pagod kami, it's not getting through to us. And you know us, Father. And so you want us to go through experiences so that your word may truly dwell in our hearts, Panginoon. So, Father, this morning we pray. Speak to us, Father. Help us to understand these principles para may apply namin sa daily life namin. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, everybody say amen. All right. So let's... Let's talk about this principle. The first, the first principle is this, okay? Now, I, would, I would like to start with this. That God speaks through events and circumstances. God speaks through events and circumstances. Now, some people don't think so. May mga tao, may mga Christians who believe na wag, ta- wag tayong, you know, wag tayong ganyan. We should not even pay attention to experiences. Dapat Word of God lang tayo, Bible lang tayo. And if you heard me last Sunday, pinaliwanag ko, the Bible, the Word of God is of course, yan ang basihan, yan ang basis, yan ang sentro ng lahat ng ating pananampalataya at buhay. You know, that, that's why we need to study the Word of God. We need to grow in our ability to study God's Word. At dapat binabasa natin ang Word of God. At the very least, dapat binabasa natin. And thankfully, ngayon sa panahon natin, ang Bible hindi lang available as in terms of a book. Pwede na ngayon you know, makinig ng Bible. Amen? So, those of you na gusto nyo magkaroon, ng, oh, hirap kayo magbasa, maybe malabo na yung mata nyo, or pa nagbabasa kayo, nakakatulog kayo, so it's a challenge for you. Uh, I don't know if you're like that. Usually, palatandaan ng katandaan niya. But anyway, so... Uh, you can go to our site, it's rlcc.ph, and I placed a link there, a New International Version, and meron ding uh, uh, Tagalog Bible. If you click those, you will be, you would go to a site because uh, you can download, okay, uh, MP3s ng mga Bibles, okay? You can, you can download a Tagalog Bible, lagay mo sa telepono mo, lagay mo sa cellphone mo, or whatever, right? Okay, so there's no excuse. Although kanina umaga, somebody made an excuse. Sabi niya, Pastor, mahi, mahina yung mata ko, mahina rin yung tenga ko. Wow, sabi ko, that's a big problem. So sabi ko sa kanya, I'll pray na may madiscover na Bible na ini-inject. So, pag i-reject na sa'yo yun, nasa dugo mo na yun. So, hopefully, <laughs> that, that will solve the problem. But anyway, yes, the Bible is so important, but like I said, you know, the Bible is not just, it's, it's more than just letters on a page. Okay? The Word of God is more than just letters in a page. Even the Bible itself contains, 
you know, stories na ang kundi mo uungkatin, you would not know what the Word of God is for you. So, th- there is a deeper meaning to the Word of God. Hindi lang literal na salita, naka-type dyan sa, sa pages ng Bible natin. Kundi the other meaning of the Word of God is the thoughts of God. And the thoughts of God is the Word of God. At pero kailangan aralin siyang maigi because they, they, it's not it's not parang just staring at you. Just like when you are uh, watching a movie, hindi mo agad nagigits ko ano yung pinaka- you know, point ng movie, right? You have to finish the whole movie. Hindi pwedeng sa kalagitna, sasabihin mo, ah, nag-gets ko na, uwi na tayo, you know? You have to finish the entire movie before you can even understand what the movie is all about. Amen? In the same way, the Bible is so full of stories. Okay, I think more than 80% are stories. Iilan lang dyan yung mga straightforward na diretso, hindi mo na kalaman siya ano pag-isipan. For God to love the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, hindi ka na kalaman mag-meditate na parang, ano kaya ibig sabihin? You know, it's just straightforward, sinasabi sa'yo, for God to love the world. But then there are many parts of Bible na kailangan mag-isip ka. Okay? So sabihin mo sa katabi mo, nahiisip ka ba? Because that will be a challenge, okay? That will be a challenge. That's why God raises up teachers. That's why meron tayong mga books and stuff like that because God wants to wants us to understand His uh, uh, Word. Amen? Alright, so let's go to this. God speaks through events and circumstances. Now, is it true? Totoo ba yun? Should I just rely on my Bible and not, you know, pay attention sa mga nangyayari sa buhay ko? Well, the early church, and especially the Apostle Peter, knew very well na, Totoo, the Bible, the Scriptures is the foundation of our faith and practice. But at the same time, they also believe that God may speak through events and circumstances. Let me show you this passage in Scripture, Acts 15, verses 5 to 8. Sabi kito, Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, Now this is the context of thought. This is in Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the center of Christianity during that time. Okay? Kasi doon pinako si Jesus at nandun yung mga apostles. So, yun pinaka ika nga uh, capital na Christianity during that time. Now, you know, when Jesus ascended to heaven, He left His disciples and several believers, most of whom were Jews. Now, there was a problem kasi the Word of God was spreading. Sa madaling salita, Jews were not the only ones na nakakarinig ng gospel who were also being saved, meron din ibang mga tao sa iba't ibang lugar na nakakarinig ng gospel who were also being saved. And that was causing some tension dito sa Jerusalem because most of the people here were Jews. And they were thinking na, whoa, you know, tayo lang mga Jews dapat na si save. Dapat di kasali yung iba. <laughs> I mean, that, at least that's how the Pharisees thought about it. But this is interesting as we will look at the story, as we go to the end of this story mamaya, we will realize that Meron na sinabi si Lord sa kanila, they already learned a very important lesson, they just missed it. Okay? So let me go back to the story. So, then some of the believers who belong to the party, party of the Pharisees, hindi lagi sila like party it's a big group, okay? Party of the Pharisees stood up and said, the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. Sa madaling sa taas, sabi nila, wait a second, hindi pwede pag Gentile ka, bigla ka nalang masisave. Hindi, kailangan maging Jew ka rin. Okay? In other words, you have to be like us. Pas circumcise ka din and then follow the law of Moses. Because that's what the Pharisees do. Okay, yun ang mga Pharisees eh. Diba? Uh, the Pharisees are those Jews na talagang, you know, dalubahasa sa, sa Bible, talagang committed kay Lord. And then, thankfully, na born again din sila. Na save sila, even though they're Pharisees. Okay? Kaya lang, dala-dala pa rin nila yung idea na, teka, sandali lang, tayo mga Jews lang talaga ang chosen people. Hindi ka sa aling iba. <laughs> okay? So, this is what happened. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. Bakit ginawa yun? Because it was an issue, a very important issue that can divide the church. Bata pa yung church at this, at this point. So dangerous yung issue because that can easily create a church split. So they had to talk about it. And then after much discussion, sabi sa verse 7, Peter got up and addressed them. Now this is Peter, okay? Remember who, si Peter? Peter is the disciple na kasama ni Jesus for three years, okay? So he stood up. And then sabi niya, brothers, okay, you know that some time ago, oh, wait a second, wait a second, okay? Now, you would expect Peter to stand up and say, okay, brothers and sisters, okay, it is written, okay? Somewhere in the Bible, it says, 
No, he doesn't say that. He says, some time ago, in other words, he's going to tell a story, di ba? Parang once upon a time. Parang, some time ago, sabi niya, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message of the gospel and believe. In other words, Peter stood up and said, sabi niya sa mga kasamahan niya, mga elders, mga leaders, and sabi niya, wait a second, may problema tayo dito, we need to deal with this. Anong word of God dito? Anong kalooban ng Panginoon? No, I know, I know, I know. I remember, merong nangyari, it's an experience, something happened a while back that talks to us or tells us kung ano talaga ang dapat natin gawin dito. God spoke, in other words, to something that happened a few days ago. Or maybe months ago, right? Amen? You follow me? So, in this quote siya ng verse, he was appealing based on experience. And then he went on. God who knows, sabi niya, the heart, showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them just as he did to us. Now, he does, you know, at this point in the story, you know, Luke, yung sumulat nito, doesn't tell us what exactly happened nung nakaraan. But for those who have been reading the book of Acts, alam nila that something happened sometime in chapter 10 and 11 na may kinalaman dito sa pangyayaring ito. Amen? But what I'm trying to drive out to you right now is that hindi, hindi unusual at hindi unbiblical or unchristian for us to be able to say, you know what, sometimes mayroon mga experiences that God uses to speak to us. Amen? Of course, hindi lahat ng experiences, so don't get me wrong. I don't want you to be so paranoid. Baka mamaya paglabas mo dyan, natalisod ka. Uy, natalisod ako. God is speaking to me. I don't want you to be like that. You know, parang weird, okay? Diba? Nauntog ka para to toy. Ha, may message si Lord. You know? Hindi, baka lang di ka nakatingin, you know, whatever. Okay, para, you know, what I'm talking, you understand what I'm saying, no? Huwag tayo masyado mag-carry over dito and say na, kung totoo yan that God speaks through experiences and circumstances. So, para ang buhay mo ngayon, parang praning ka, parang, baka nangungusam si Lord, you know? No, no, it, we just live our lives daily, knowing fully well, na minsan, minsan meron mga experiences, and you'll be, begin to understand kung paano nangyayari ito. But there are experiences, oftentimes, that God uses to get through us. Amen? Alright, so in this particular case, pakita natin na legitimate for us to say na God speaks through events and circumstances. Now, second principle that I want you to understand is this. That God may use ordinary and extraordinary events and circumstances. So God may use ordinary or extraordinary events. So nung sinabi ni Peter, when he stood up, sabi niya, Hey guys, naalala ko kung ano yung nangyari just a few days or weeks ago, na, na recall ko yun, and I think God spoke then, and He's speaking to us now, dito sa situation natin ito. And so we need to go back and see how this works out, because God uses ordinary and extraordinary events. So, we go back to chapter 10, okay? So in chapter 10, ito sabi, at Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. So now, alam nyo saan galing yung ice cream, right? <clears throat> okay. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, uh, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. So, Luke is telling us, because he's a he's a Roman soldier, he's not a Jew, he's a Gentile, basically. Okay? In other words, he's the kind of person I would never associate with. Amen? So, Luke is telling us that kind of information. And then he went on, he and, his, and all his family were devout. And God fearing, he gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. So this is very possible, mga kapatid. Listen carefully. Here's a man, as we will see, hindi pa niya kilala si Lord, hindi pa siya born again. And yet, nandun na yung mga palatandaan that he is seeking God. Okay? He is what you call a Gentile uh, seeker. Nagahanap siya. And it's wonderful pa nakabit ka ng ganyan, no? Now, he's very religious. As you can see, he prays a lot. He gives. So, hindi lang mga Kristiyano ang Sometimes a person who does not know the Lord may be like this. Diba? And so, God uh, uh, is interested in this person, Cornelius. And then, in verse 3, sabi, One day, at about 3 in the afternoon, he had a vision. So, this is an extraordinary experience, a vision. What is a vision? Well, a vision is something na nakikita mo while you are awake. 
So it's different from a dream, a non-dream. It's something that you can when you are asleep. All right? How many of you are asleep, asleep right now? Voila. Okay, so praise God. So you're all awake. So if you so see something while you're awake, it's called vision. So you can see vision si Cornelius. Huh? Maybe some kind of picture or images that he And then he distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. So as you will read the rest of the story, which I will not read to you, basically what happened was, was that there was an angel, so a major extraordinary event. John. There was an angel, and he was praying during this time, and he saw an angel to him, and he called his name. You know, how's that? Okay? That's cool, right? You pray, God, and then you call your name. It's good, right? I'm scared, you know, right? So he's, the angel called his name, and basically told him, he said to him, Cornelius, there is this guy, his name is Simon, Peter, you know, you go to him, he's already in the house, he's in the house, and so forth. In other words, with all the details, that's extraordinary. That's extraordinary. Amen? So in other words, here's a particular situation. It's a boy ni Cornelius. One day he's praying, and he's always been praying. He's a prayerful person. Okay? So one day, God decides to give him this experience. Now, can this happen to us? Can God just give you a vision? Of course. Amen? But, of course, ito yung sabi ko sa inyo, that you've got to be, uh, you know, uh, grounded in the Word of God. Kailangan na hindi tayo yung scripture because hindi lahat na napapanaginipan mo o nakikita mo is from the Lord. A lot of times, mga pinapanaginipan natin are usually just anxieties. In other words, nag-worry ka sa mga bagay-bagay. Kaya ka na nanaginip. No? O kung nanaginip ka man ng number na dapat taya mo sa loto, let me assure you, that did not come from the Lord. How sure are you, Pastor? Because the Lord never gambles. Amen? So, when you say, you know, I saw Jesus, he said, I'm going to die, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, that's not the Lord. Okay? So, you know, being grounded in the Word of God keeps you safe and secure. And you can now evaluate the other class of what they say, extra-biblical ways of receiving guidance from the Lord. Right? The circumstances, the things that happen, and all of that. So, be very careful about that. So, you know, if I were you, spend time Growing in the Word of God. Lalong lalo na yung mga nagmi-ministry. Lalong lalo na yung mga nagmi-ministry. Tasa kamay lahat ng mi-ministry. Okay. This one is for you. Yung mga hindi nagmi-ministry, manood lang kayo. Yung mga nagmi-ministry kasi, you think that ministry is a substitute for spirituality. You think that serving God is what it's all about. Hindi. Serving God is just the result of your relationship with God. Amen. Pag wala kang relationship with the Lord, yung ministry mo will become a stumbling block for you. Yung ministry mo will become a source of pride. Yung ministry mo will become the very reason why you will fall. So don't ever make the ministry a substitute to your spirituality. Amen? All right. So get grounded in the Word of God. So tinawag ni Lord si Cornelius at sinabi sa kanya, Cornelius, I want you to go to Simon. So God uses ordinary events or extraordinary events. Sometimes paulit-ulit ang isang bagay. You will know that God is just calling your attention because may, ang, may mga bagay-bagay that becomes very meaningful and significant, lalo na kapag yung emotions mo are involved in it. So listen carefully. Here's the clue. Kumbaga, ito yung ringing tone ng Holy Spirit. You know this? This is the ringing tone of the Holy Spirit. When you are going through something at nagkakaroon ka ng emotions, very intense emotions through that experience, God is calling you. It's an intense situation. So I'm not talking about something ordinary lang, you know. I'm talking about something na siguro na-stress ka, nagagalit ka, naiinis ka, nagdadamdam ka, naiimo ka, whatever. Usually, yan yung time that the Holy Spirit is calling your attention. Yun yung kanyang ringing tone. So kung lagay nyo na sa cellphone nyo, amen? Lagay nyo sa cellphone nyo yung ringing tone na yun. Because when you're going through something na parang naiinis ka, na, na parang gusto mo na magwala, gusto mo na manuntok ng pader, you know, gusto mo muntok yung ulo mo, gusto mo pakamatay, gusto mo kumain ng, ng lisol, you know, or something, you know, whatever it is that driving you to an intense emotional situation, be rest assured that most likely God is speaking to you through that situation. Amen? 
So these are situations that you should pay attention to. I'll get back to that later on. So, number three. Okay? So the first one is God is speaking through, to us through circumstances, events in our lives. Secondly, He uses ex ordinary, okay, extraordinary uh, events. Number three, God uses events and circumstances to show the application of His Word. In other words, mga kapatid, listen carefully now. Kapag si Lord na communicate sa atin through experiences, He's not adding a new revelation na wala sa Bible. He's simply showing you how you are to apply o ano talaga ibig sabihin niya doon sa kanyang word. Because often, more, most of us dito, when we, you know, have you done this? Have you experienced this? You know, quiet time ka, uh, nagbasa ka ng scripture or verse, parang wala kang na, naintindihan and, and you close it and you, you know, di mo lang kung para kanino yun, para ba sa kapitbahay mo yun or, or somebody, you know, you know, you know pinatay si Goliath, pinugutan ng ulo, so you don't understand, pugutan ko ba yung ulo ng kapitbahay ko? You know, what, what do I do with this? Alright? So sometimes you don't understand the word. And so God in His mercy sa atin, would want to clarify and show you that he, this is how his word is supposed to be applied. Now, si Peter spent three years of his life listening to Jesus. Now, Jesus spoke the very words of God. Biretso na yun. You cannot be so... Wala na. Yun na yun. Dulo na yun. Mismo na yun. You know, you're talking to Jesus and Jesus is talking to you. Wala ka lang... You know, sabi niya, if anyone has seen me, he has seen the Father. So, whoa! You know, yan na yun. Close contact. Jesus talking to you. Sasabihin sa'yo ni Jesus, yun na mismo, yung Word of God. No? Hindi mo na kailangan sabihin kay Jesus na, Jesus, sandali lang. You know, alam ko, magaganda yung sinasabi mo, pero checking ko muna sa concordance yan. Nasaan ba yan? Anong verse ba yan? You know, this is Jesus speaking. And Peter was exposed to Jesus for three years. Now, this is one of the things that Jesus said. Just before he left. So you would assume na napakahalaga niya because, di ba, anytime na magpapaalam sa yung isang tao, taalis na, usually mga last words niya, importante na, right? So in this particular case, this is what Jesus said to Peter and the rest of the apostles. Sabi niya, therefore, Go and make disciples only of people in Jerusalem. Go and make disciples of Jews only. Please don't talk to Gentiles. No. Sabi ni Jesus, Go and make disciples of what? Of all nations. Now Peter was there. Siguro mayiyak-iyak pa si Peter para Jesus iiwan mo na kami. Oh, so sad, so sad, you know. And G and Peter was there and he's probably holding on to Jesus. Jesus mo ko iiwan sa mga sa mga ko, you know. And Jesus is about to just leave them and it was an intense moment. Dapat si Peter should have remembered all the things na sinabi ni Jesus, lalo-lalo na to. So supposedly dapat na figure out na niya. All right? That God wants someone like Cornelius to come and be saved. Amen? But that's not what happened. Okay, here's what happened. About noon, so si Cornelius was praying around 3 o'clock, which is the usual prayer time ng mga Jews. Now, si Peter naman, as you can see the contrast dito, about noon siya tanghali, the following day, as they were on their, on their journey uh, and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. Now, during that time, yung mga bahay noong araw, gawa sa putek na pinatigas, so you can actually go up there, you know, at pwede kang mag-pray. Also, pwede mo rin hukayin yun. That's why in the Gospels, there was this story about four men na hinukay nila yung kisame, you know? So, you can understand that now. Pwede mangyari yun during that time. You know? Wala pa silang mga yero ni pauso ng araw yun. So, Peter was there, up there. He was praying. And this is what happened. This is what, this is what happened. He became hungry. How many of you nagutom na kayo? Good. Now, gutom na kayo, right? Nakatingin kayo sa akin, tingin nyo sa akin, chicken joy. I understand that. Okay. He became hungry and wanted something to eat. And while the meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. Okay? Now, <laughs> listen. Si Cornelius was praying and he saw a vision. Si Peter naman, nagugutom, naka-imagine ng two things. And he had a trance, okay? He fell into a trance. And the Lord knows, the Lord knows Peter. 
Listen, okay? The Lord knows Peter. The Lord knows Cornelius. Kaya si Cornelius, alam niya paano mag-communicate ko Cornelius. So, ginawa ni Lord, pinagpadala ng angel. Tama na yung angel, okay? Kay Peter, iba yung laman ng utak ni Peter. Pagkain. Okay, so here's what happened, okay? He saw heaven opened and something like a large sheet, parang kumot, you know, parang isang malaking kumot, uh, being let down to earth by its four corners. So nakita niya, bumababa, parang isang malaking plato, isang malaking palanggana, you know? And, and this is so relevant for Peter, kasi gutom si Peter, di ba? Tanghaling tapat yun, eh, di ba? So nung nakita niya, parang, wow! Eat all you can, you know? Smorgasbord, okay? Para bababa na, di ba? So, you see the Peter. So, immediately, na-catch yung attention niya. Kasi God knows us, eh, di ba? God knows us. So, sometimes, the way to catch your attention is through something na parang importante sa'yo. So, God uses that. He always uses kung ano man yung parang something na parang binibigyan natin ng attention. Then, He uses that to speak to us. Alright? Now, here's what happened. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals as well as reptiles and birds. Now, if you're a Jew, you would know this. Alam niyo ito kung kayo ay Jew, but since you're not a Jew, I'll explain it to you. Okay? Ang mga Jew na may mili ng pagkain yan. Hindi pwedeng lahat pwedeng kainin. Just like Muslims, right? Today, tayo hindi, ba tayo? We eat everything, right? Kahit na, you know, I remember you know, there was this young person na kahit na laglag na pag binigay mo sa kanya, susubo pa rin niya, kakainin pa rin niya. So we just eat everything. Okay? And some, somebody asked me one time, sabi niya, kayo ba mga Kristiyano, kumakain ba kayo ng dinuguan? Hindi ah, sobra ka. Hindi kami kumakain ng dinuguan. Pag walang puto. Kailangan may puto. Okay? Anyway. So then a voice told him, Get up, Peter, kill, and eat. And now the rest of the story, if you would read, I, I'm not going to read it anymore, but the rest of the story went like this. Basically, sabi ni Peter, No way, highway. Hindi ako kakain ng mga ganyan. Okay? Kahit na eat all you can, yan, kahit sagot mo Lord yung bill, you know, I will not eat that. Because I'm a Jew. So, God had to do this three times. Are you listening? Three times kailangan gawin ni Lord. So, bahaba na naman. Siguro, iba na naman kulay. Siguro, pink naman yung, you know, yung, yung kumo. You know, so blue naman yung kumo. I don't know. But three times, God had to say, Peter, please. Pay attention. So each time, pagbaba ng kumot, sasabihin ni Lord, kain ka na, kainin mo na. Sasagot so, ni Peter, ayaw, ayaw, kahit gutom ako, di ko, kahit mamatay ako, di ko kakainin yan. So take two, baba na naman yung kumot. Sabi ni Lord, kainin mo yan, kain, you know, kill it, you know, isaw, sisig, lahat, just eat it. Sabi ni, ni Peter, no way, highway. Three times he wouldn't eat. All right, okay. Huh. But here's what, the, what God says. The Lord said this, Nung boy pa si Jesus with, the, with Peter. And this is what the Lord said, Matthew 15, verse 11. What goes into someone's, someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, this is what defiles them. Now, ang, ang context nito was yung, you know, kinikriticize si Jesus and his apostles kasi kumakain sila ng mga unclean foods. So sabi ni Jesus, you know what? Yung pumapasok sa bibig does not make you unclean. It's what comes out, okay, that makes you unclean. In other words, sabi niya, all foods are clean. Lahat ng pagkain, okay lang kainin. Amen? Now you understand bakit kinakain natin lahat ng bagay? Okay? Except yung mga nang lalaglag, you know, pag binigay siya, huwag mo nang, pwede rin, basta wala pang three days. Okay. But listen now. Jesus told them this. This is the word of the Lord. Sinabi ni Lord kay Peter yan. And you know what Peter did? Nung nakita niya yung mga animals, oh, di ako kain yan. He just forgot. Now, a lot of you here dito, I think here every Sunday, you will hear a message, you will hear the word of God. Pagdating lang Monday, Tuesday, you know, maybe Tuesday as early, maybe as early as mamayang hapon. Somebody will come along and ask you probably, ano yung tinuro ni Pastor Bong kaninang umaga? Oh, uh, tungkol kay Jesus? And you just missed it. You forgot it. And, and sometimes, siguro for some of you, medyo mas, ano kayo, mas mahusay kayo. Maybe it would come around Wednesday and you would completely forget kung ano man yung mensahe ng Panginoon sa'yo. Kaya nga, for, for a lot of us, we need to check our hearts dito kasi, Oftentimes, 
nakikinig tayo ng Word of God, pero hindi talaga natin ito minimeditate ng gusto. So that this Word may really be planted deep down sa puso natin para it can bear fruit. What happens is that kinig tayo na kinig. That's why I always tell people, and this is, this is true, I always tell people, lalo yung mga tao mahilig kumatay ng mga seminar na ito, seminar ganyan, seminar ganyan. And I always tell them, you know, dami na natin teaching dito sa church. Ang kailangan mo, application. Stop going into all these events kung tutusin. Now, unless it's an event now, we encourage you to go. Pero a lot of Christians gusto nilang kinig lang na kinig na kinig na kinig na kinig. You see, just by being exposed to the Word of God does not transform you. Kahit narinig mo yung information, it doesn't mean anything. Unless yung Word na yun penetrates your heart, goes deep down sa puso mo, and then roots lalabas sa puso mo, and you meditate on it, and you meditate on it, and then you begin to apply it, you begin to respond to it, then yung narinig mo would be useful para sa iyo. But for a lot of us, most of the time, hindi natin nagigets. That's why, you know, listen, God knows us. God knows us fully. Alam niya na even today right now, habang nakikinig ka sa akin, a lot of things na sinasabi ko, naririnig mo, but actually, it's just circling around your mind. Hindi pa siya nagsisink in. Not all of you, of course. Amen? Not all of you. There are some of you dito na pagkarinig mo ng Word of God, immediately you grab it and say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm going to use that in my life. So there's no more need for experience. But for majority of us, pag nakarinig ka ng Word of God, Amen! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! And while I'm preaching, nakaupo ka dito, physically present ka, but here you're like this. And for you, God has prepared experiences. Amen? So, God wants His Word to be really understood. Kaya merong experiences. You follow me? Again, don't be paranoid. Hindi lahat ang nangyayari sa buhay natin may mensahe si Lord. Okay? So, pag medyo kumain ka na maraming kamote, tapos parang kumukuloy yung mo, ano kayo mensahe ni Lord? Walang mensahe si Lord. Amen? Nasobrahan ka lang ng kamote. You know? But sometimes, things, you know, repeat itself too frequently that maybe God is telling you something. If you keep on getting into a relationship, that's a broken relationship, a broken heart, ka, and then you get into another relationship, and then legal on them, you get broken heart, and then it happens again, you get broken heart. Hey, hey, hello. Maybe God is telling you something. Amen? And maybe it has to do with something that sinabi na niya sa'yo before. Maybe there was a long time ago na nabigay siya ng calling sa'yo. Maybe he said, I want you to offer your life to me. I want you to serve me. You heard it. You even cried. The first time narinig mo yun, parang, Lord, tinatawag mo ako. You cried. And you're so, you're so moved. And then after so many months and years and a lot of things happened, now you're engrossed with all the things sa mundong ito. And you have forgotten his word. So God gives you an experience. Just so you will recall. This happened to me years ago. Nangyari sa akin to. You see, when I got saved, the first time, kinuusap na ako ng Panginoon na He's going to use me in the ministry. As early as nung time ng akin salvation. For others, masasave mo na sila, then later on, malalaman niya, tinatawag sila ng Lord. Sa akin, it was simultaneous. So when I got saved, at the same time, I knew in my heart, God wanted me to serve Him. So I got saved 22 years old ako, and then by... By the time na I was 24, I got my, I got a job. At yung job ko, maganda yung kita ko. And before you know it, for about four years, you know, 24 and again, 28, I completely forgot about God's calling in my life. I mean, I was earning. I was making money, you know. So sabi ko kay Lord, parang, Lord, promise, tataasan ko yung tights ko, you know, just... Forget about this calling, calling. So one day, at the age of 28, nagkasakit ako, hinimalaan ng doktor kung sakit ko, and I was there at the hospital. I thought I was going to die. Naghihingal ako, nangingisay ako, hindi ko maintindihan ang nangyari sa buhay ko. And the Lord spoke to my heart, and He said, Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. 
And he reminded me of his call in my life. And I said, Lord, please, I, I don't deserve it. Makasalanan ako. I don't, des- I, I don't want to serve you. Ayoko mapahiya yung pangalan mo. Tell you what, Lord, you promise, you know, payagang mo lang pumunta sa New York because I was dreaming to go to New York and become a, a stockbroker. You know, balang araw, stockbroker, bomb by law, stockbroker. You know, I was dreaming that. And I was saying, alaw mo lang pumunta doon sa New York. Pag mayaman na ako, I'll support the church. So God said, no, no. I want you to offer your life to me. And so I had to experience that. I had to go through that moment before you can just remember God told you something. So sometimes God is speaking to you. He wants you to do something. May pinagagawa siya in ministry and then you forgot all about it. So God says, okay, time for an experience. And He would allow you to go to an experience just so you can remember His word. Are you listening, mga kapatid? All right. Here's the fourth principle. God wants us to reflect on events and circumstances to hear His voice. You see, mga kapatid, ang, ang susi sa isang effective Christian life is that you have regular times of reflection. You cannot live your life na parang, alam mo yun, parang turumpo. You know, you're just, you know, intense ka palagi. Pag dilat na, pag dilat na, pag bukas ng mata mo yan, <gasps> you're so intense and you come home and yung mabuhok mo nakatayo you know you're just intense there's no way that God can get through to you Kaya ang susi sa Christian life is to live your life with a certain rhythm. That's why God created the idea of Sabbath. Para, ga, para intentionally titigil ka and you will reflect upon what ano yung nangyari sa iyo. Because God wants us to reflect. Okay, here's what happened. Acts 10, 17-20. While Peter was wondering about the meaning of the vision, okay, tatlong beses na siya pinakitaan ni Lord ng vision, and he still did not understand. So he was wondering, sabi niya, wow, kumot, nalaglag, may mga pagkain, may mga bulate, sari-sari, you know, and then sabi, Lord, kainin ko na, three times? Ano kaya ibig sabihin? He was wondering. He was thinking about it. He still couldn't understand. So while he was wondering about the meaning of the vision, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. So, you know, so pumunta yung mga utusan ni Cornelius dun sa bahay niya. They called out asking if Simon was, who was known as Peter was staying there. You know, hello, may nakatira bang Peter dito? Hello, you know, good afternoon. May nakatira bang Peter dito? And Peter was hearing it and, you know, reading yung siguro yung pangalan niya. Parang, parang may tumatawag sa akin. Sino yun? You know, he, he, was, he was hearing his voice, uh, their voice. Now, while Peter was still thinking about the vision, okay? Easy pa rin siya ng isip. You know, Peter! Diyan ba nakatala si Peter? So, nag-iisip siya, ano kaya? <laughs> Peter! You know, Peter, diyan ka ba nakatira? And he was thinking about the vision. Thinking about the vision. You know, ano kaya ibig sabihin ng vision? So, finally, na, si Lord parang naubos ng pasensya. So, the Spirit said to him, Simon, Simon, Three men are looking for you. So get up, stop thinking, okay, and go downstairs. <laughs> Can you imagine? Sino sabi kay Peter? Peter, tayo ka na dyan, baba ka sa agdana, huwag kang tatalon, mataas yung bahay. Go down, walk through the stairs. You know, but it's like parang God was so gracious and patient. Alam mo, misa, tayo ganyan eh. God has to do this to us, okay? Kasi misa, wala talaga tayo sa focus eh. So, bisa sasabihin ng Panginoon, oh, anak, oh, Paul, okay, diretso lang, ha? Liko sa kaliwa. O, oh, mauntog ka dyan, kanan, you know? Because sometimes God has really have to go down talaga to our level because we're so hard of hearing. So, the Lord did that to Peter. Sabi niya, do not hesitate to go down with them for I have sent them. Amen. So, God wants us to reflect. And God will confirm. Now, now listen, before I go further, you know, here's what our lives are, okay? On a daily basis, yung life natin may be like this, okay? Yung buhay natin. Everything is fine. 
everything is just balanced, you know. Ayos ng lahat, mabait yung mga tao sa bahay, sa paligid mo. Lahat sila, they're kind-hearted, you know. Obedient lahat. Pag sila maghugas ka ng pinggan, lahat sila naghuhugas. You know, no, this is a very peaceful, you know. No? Nakakapanood ka ng TV, nauubos mo yung buong palabas. You know, it's, just, it's just a wonderful life. And so, minsan, after a while, na out of focus ka na. And you begin to focus on one area of your life too much. Maybe it's your work. Maybe yung pagkakitaan mo. Maybe it's relationship. Maybe boyfriend, girlfriend. Maybe sa- You just go in that direction over there. And then God knows you. God knows that if you continue to the direction na yon, your life will be unbalanced. And so what he does is that he puts pressure in an area of your life. He creates a situation kung saan mararandaman mo that there are areas of your life na napapabayaan mo. So He puts a pressure on that. Maybe it's your family. Maybe it's your walk with the Lord. Maybe yung, it has to do with yung commitment mo sa, sa ministry. He just puts a very strong pressure there. And usually, ang reaction mo dito, ano ba yan? Hindi na, naiiris ka sa, because there's something you want and then God puts pressure in another area, you know? Maybe, masaya ka sa ministry, you know? And then, sa bahay, magulo, and your you know, mother mo, father mo, aso mo or something, you know? And they're t- making life difficult for you and, and naiiris ka. Ba't bakit ganyan? Nagsaserve ako kay Lord, nanggugulo kayo, you know? And God keeps on pressuring that area, you know? Parang, uuwi ka na lang, you know, may stress, then darating ka sa bahay, parang yun na naman yung problema. Ayoko na, ayoko na. Doon na ako sa church, matutulog. Doon na ako titira. Pastor Bong, bigyan mo ko na isang kwarto sa center. But actually, what was happening, really, is that God is pushing that area. So, minsan, hindi na nag-work out yung ministry mo, nag-burn out ka na, and minsan, sinisimulat ang tao, but actually, there's something to do with your walk with the Lord that is putting a pressure on. That's why you have to reflect Lagi. And if, for example, kung sa family mo lagi nag-aaway ng yung asawa, and, you know, hindi yung normal na away lang na parang nagkatampuhan lang kayo. I mean, as a, as a daily battle. Di ba, nagkakitaan kayo, na, basta nagkakitaan lang kayo ng asawa mo, labasan na kayo ng mga itak, taga, you know, and you're, you're in a fighting mode every day. Or your, your parents, you know, or ikaw, yung, yung mga magulang mo, lagi nalang stressed out ka, or, or sa trabaho mo, lagi ka nalang ganito. Lagi, you know that when these things are happening, God is putting a pressure on that. And saying, I want you to pay attention to something na napapabayaan mo. And the su- ang susi po talaga, mga kapatid, please listen carefully. If you want to live your life Really glorifying the Lord, you've got to pay attention to experiences. Because they are not accidental. You see, pag ikaw ay tinanggap mo si Kristo sa buhay mo, when you receive Jesus into your heart, you enter the kingdom of God. And what is the kingdom of God? That is His realm of reign sa buhay mo. And if you would surrender every area of your life, He will rule everything na sinusurrender mo. But there are areas na ayaw mo surrender, so God puts a finger there. Maybe it's about your finances. Ayaw mo surrender si Lord kay Lord yung finances mo. Parang, Lord, save my soul. Don't touch my wallet. So here's what God does. Okay? Itong areas ng life mo, pinagkakatiwala mo sa akin, family mo, etc. Yeah? But itong area ng life mo, ayaw mo pagkatiwala, I'll put a finger on it to draw your attention. So suddenly, broke ka. Suddenly, dahil mong utang. Suddenly, hindi ka makasurvive, you know? And suddenly, yung sweldo mo, hanggang ilang araw lang, ubus na, and you're wondering why. And suddenly, nandiyan na yung mga bills na daratingan, and you're, and you're stressed out, and you're worried. Pari, Lord, bakit ganito? Pari? And God keeps pressuring. God keeps pressuring. Keeps pressuring. Because the Lord of your money is not the Lord. Kundi ikaw. Maybe it's an area of relationships. Siguro yung area na yun, parang ikaw lang doon, you don't want God to interfere, pag meron kang nagustuhan, or whatever, meron kang, meron kang may naliligaw sa'yo, ikaw na naliligaw, and you don't want God to interfere and say, my anak, hindi siya yung will ko sa'yo. You don't want, you don't want to hear from God. Pag sinabi sa'yo ng tao, narinig mo na ba si Lord? Hindi ko narinig si Lord, ayoko marinig si Lord, mahal ko tong tao ito, siya na ang pag-asa ko sa buhay. So God puts a pressure there. Because yung relationship mo does not honor the Lord. 
See, God loves you. Amen? And that's why may mga experiences tayo sometimes. Now, we're wondering, bakit Lord, bakit nagkakaganito? Pressure. Because it's an area siguro na hindi pa sinusurrender sa Kanya. Amen? Are you listening? Are you learning something today? Okay, so the last one. God will confirm if our conclusions about events or circumstances are correct. So, let's look at this verse. While talking with him, you know, Peter went inside, okay, kausap niyo si Cornelius, and found a large gathering of people. So, sumama na siya, sumama siya ngayon, kay, doon sa mga utosan ni Cornelius, and he went to the house of Cornelius, at pagdating niya doon, daming tao. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile, but God has shown me, now, si Peter, medyo nagkakaroon ng realization, God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. Now, paano pinakita ni Lord John? Well, you know, kumot, you know, tatlong beses, Peter, kain na. So, minimeditate niya, sabi niya, you know, I think may sinasabi si Lord. Tingin ko may sinasabi si Lord. Dapat pala hindi ko i-consider ng anything impure or unclean. Good. Peter, pwede na katang bigyan ng B+. Plus, you know, because now you're understanding now what God is saying. So, when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? <laughs> now, si Peter, sabi ni Lord sa kanya, Go, make disciples of all nations. Now, dumating siya sa bahay ni Cornelius. Ang daming tao. So, ito question ni Peter. Anong gagawin ko dito? Naalala ko tuloy sa Eid Bulaga, di ba? Ay, sa Eid Bulaga. Sa, sa ano, Babul Gang. Ano ba? Ano yun? Yung pag may nagtatanong, yung, ano ba? Uh, uh, pupunta ho ba kayo sa, sa ganito? Hindi. Magpapakamatay ako. You know, sino ba yun? Ayun yun. Parang, parang gano'n na imagine ko dito. Eh, no? Parang si Peter, na andun sa isang sitwasyon, ang dami mga tao, tapos sabi niya, Anong gusto niyong gawin ko rito? Dilaan mo yung sahig, Peter. Bigyan mo sila ng taksising ko pa uwi. Ano ba, Peter? Ang daming tao! May I ask, why you sent for me? So, then Peter began to speak. I now realize. I just go. Palakpakan natin si Peter. Palakpakan natin. Uh, okay. Yeah, parang tayo. Yeah, parang tayo yan. Yung, ang dami na sinasabi ni Lord. Tapos talagang, and, talaga sobra na, no? talaga gumuguho na yung pumpaligid natin. And then, bigla tayo sabihin, parang may nare-realize ako. <laughs> ang sarap sa kalit, di ba? Mamamatay na kami lahat, ngayon mo palang narealize. Okay, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. Good for you, Peter. But accepts from every nation the one who fears Him and does what is right. Wow. And so while Peter was still speaking, so here's a proof that na, na, na so God affirms and confirms na tama yung pagkaintindihan ni Peter. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. So pinakita ni, ni Lord kay Peter, Peter, na gets mo. A+. Plus. This is what I want to happen. I want Cornelius and everyone else, lahat ng mga Jedas, to be saved. And don't ever call them unclean. Amen? Now, here's what happened. Ipa natapos yung story. The apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Jedas also had received the word of God. So, andun sila sa Jerusalem, itong mga taong ito. Now, remember, kanina binasa ko yung unang-una. Do you still recall? Kung nakalimutan nyo na. Acts 15, nasa Jerusalem sila and they were fighting about the issue kung tatanggapin ba yung mga Gentiles or hindi. Remember that? Now, this is the same people. The same people. Nandun sila sa Jerusalem. So, when Peter went up to, saan? Jerusalem. Sabihin nyo nga, Jerusalem. Now, this is chapter 11. Chapter 11 to. Chapter 15 yung binasa natin. Saan yung nangyari chapter 15? Jerusalem. Saan nangyari to chapter 11? Jerusalem. You know, this is the same place. Now, so Peter went up to Jerusalem. The circumcised believers, meaning the Jews, criticized him and said, you went into the house of uncircumcised men and ate with them. In other words, bad ka, bad ka, Peter. Nakikihalubilo ka sa mga non-Jews, sa mga Gentiles. Bad you, bad you. So, here's what happened. Starting from the beginning, 
Peter told them the whole story. So, kwento si Peter. Hindi siya nag-quote ng verse. Kwento siya ng exact na nangyari. That's why if you read your Bibles, talaga parang inuulit yung story. You know, have you ever felt like this pag nagbabasa ka ng Bible? Bigla pagdating mo sa part na yun, parang inuulit yung story. Parang, nabasa ko na to. Ba't inuulit pa, di ba? Alam mo bakit inuulit? Kasi ang kulit natin. Kaya inuulit. He wants us to understand. So, here's what happened. Pagkatapos yung story, look, when they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God saying, So then, let's say so then. Ay, nag-gets ko na. Wow naman, na-realize ko na. So then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. I mean, you know, kaling naman. This is chapter 11. In chapter 15, They were complaining about Gentiles being saved. They realized this, chapter 11, na nangungusap si Lord sa kanila. And then four chapters later, they completely forgot. Are you with me? You see, God knows us. Alam niya kung gaano tayo minsan kahirap makagets ng mga mensahe ng Panginoon. This is true for all of us. It is true for the church. This is true for me. That's why, mga kapatid, here are the guidelines that gusto ko maalala nyo. First, God speaks through events and circumstances. Amen? Secondly, God may use ordinary and extraordinary events and circumstances. So be ready. God uses events and circumstances to show the application of His Word. Okay? So it's not something new, but more like ano ibig sabihin ng Kanyang Word. And then number four, God wants us to reflect on events and circumstances to hear His voice. So wag tayong parang lalo magpapakabisi pag medyo nasaktan tayo sa isang area, wag kang pakabisi para kalimutan yung reflect upon it. Amen? Young people, pwede ka kayo ng broken heart, don't be busy, reflect. Yeah, older people, pag nagkakaroon yung problema sa pamilya, sa mga anak, sa bahay, don't try to divert your attention para malibang kayo and spend more time sa trabaho. Reflect. Because God may be speaking to you through that event. And then finally, God will confirm if our conclusions about events and circumstances are correct. So in other words, here's the point na gusto ko malaman ninyo that I want you to take away today. Your experiences may contain God's messages. Let me say that again. Your experiences may contain God's messages. Now, sinasabi ko may contain because not all the time and not all experiences contain God's messages. Karamihan sa mga experiences natin probably would just be ordinary. Pero pag nakakita ka ng pattern, Pag nakakita ka ng paulit-ulit, halimbawa, lahi ka nagkakaroon ng conflict sa pamilya, sa bahay ninyo, or if there is a something that is causing intense emotion sa paulit-ulit lang, if, if you are falling into the same kind of sin, paulit-ulit lang, or, or maybe lagi nangyayari na there's this area of your life na tinuruan ka na niya before, dati ang dami mong pera, nakalimutan mo si Lord, so tinuruan ka niya na wala ka ng pera, and then ngayon may pera ka na naman, and then paulit ka na naman, kinakalimutan mo na naman si Lord. So God is telling you, when will you listen? And that's the application. Listen closely. Kasi pag inuulit ulit ni Lord yung mensahe, usually palala ng palala. Nagkadalasan ang pasakit ng pasakit. Now, in His mercy, pag meron kang hindi nagigets, He's going to give you experiences na light lang. Just to call your attention. Tapos pag hindi ka nakinig, He's going to send another experience. Medyo mas matindi ng konti. Pag hindi ka pa rin nakinig, He will send another one. Mas malupit. And then this goes on. God is so patient. He just keeps on sending you experiences after experiences. para lang magising ka so that you will not reach yung destination na pupuntahan mo na hindi ka aware. Do you follow me? See, most of the time, nasa isang daan ka o nasa isang kalye ka, 
that is going to lead to destruction, pero malayo pa yun. Andun pa sa dulo ng kalye yon yung bangin. Andun pa sa dulo. Right now, ang nakikita mo sa kalye, magandang tanawin. Maganda yung beach. Maganda yung flowers. Mahangin. At the end of the road is a ravine. At the end of the road is destruction. Pero habang tumalakbay ka, ang sarap! So God calls your attention. He gives you a flat tire. God calls your attention. He causes you to lose gasoline. God calls your attention by bringing something but to prevent you from continuing to the direction of because at the end of it, you will be destroyed. That's how God loves you. So, kung may nangyayari experiences sa'yo today, na parang paulit-ulit, don't be so hard-headed. Tikas ng ulo. Be sensitive. Be soft. And just say to God, God, may sinasabi ka ba? Maybe I'm not hearing you clearly. But are you saying something to me? Open your heart. Amen? Open your heart. So would you just stand up right now? Hindi ko alam ang mga sitwasyon ninyo. Maybe this is not something relevant sa'yo kasi you've been listening to the Lord. Well, that's good. Keep that attitude. Pero maybe there are some of you dito na medyo nagiging makulit. At parang nakikipagtagi sa nga kay Lord. Parang kay nagre-wrestling. God has been giving you experiences after experiences. Sa katerba na yung failure mo, sa katerba na yung mga closed doors mo, pero ayaw mo pa rin mag-respond. Ayaw mo pa rin magpakumbaba. What will it take for you to just pay attention? to what God is saying to you. What will it take? Bow your heads right now. Father, Lord God, patawarin mo kami because there are many times that we are hard-headed. Many times when we refuse to listen. Sometimes you directly speak to us through your word. Sometimes it's through experiences. Father in heaven, Please help us to hear your voice clearly. Para hindi na kami mapahamak pa, Panginoon. Para hindi mapahamak yung mga tao sa paligid namin because of our stubbornness of heart. Help us to listen, Lord. Thank you for loving us and being patient with us. Thank you for speaking to us through your word as well as through experiences. Salamat po, Panginoon. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's worship Him.